السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all have a very blessed Ramadan May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq and health to worship Him Azza wa Jal in the best way and the way that is receiving Him subhanahu wa ta'ala Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen Inshallah brothers and sisters as this is the month of fasting and the month of dua as well uh, I thought that after Fajr every day for about 10 minutes Every day I will share with you a dua A dua of the Prophet sallallahu Or a dua of one of the other prophets Or a dua of one of the companions Or a dua of one of the tabi'een Or a dua of tabi'een Those righteous people of the past In hopes that inshallah we can use that In our own dua That throughout the month of Ramadan Maybe we can memorize some of those duas as well Because the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talked about Ramadan in Surah Al-Baqarah and he talked about fasting the month of Ramadan in between that passage he says وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ that when my servant asks you concerning me I am very near and I respond to the dua of the supplicant when he or she calls upon me indicating to us that dua is something that we are encouraged to do especially when we're fasting especially in the month of Ramadan and we know that perhaps most of us if not all of us know that but when we sit down to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oftentimes after a few seconds or maybe a few minutes we don't know what to ask we kind of run out of ideas uh, We lack the eloquence, we lack the, uh, the experience or whatever it is to, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And that's when these du'as become very special Because these du'as are so eloquent and so comprehensive And if we understand what they mean and we say them, we can Put our own needs inside the envelope of these du'as So every day inshallah ta'ala I'll be sharing one du'a with you I'll share the du'a I'll share the translation I'll go over the meaning quickly And then inshallah ta'ala It's all recorded as you know Everything is recorded in this uh, prayer hall Video recorded So it'll be on YouTube inshallah You can go back to it, listen to it Write it down, memorize it Inshallah ta'ala or as I say the dua you can record it on your phones We will say it together as well inshallah You can do it at that time when we're saying it together You can record it on your phones So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it something beneficial for all of us Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen so The first dua for today That I wanted to start with inshallah ta'ala. I thought a lot about what dua I should start with And I thought I'll start with this one uh, It may be Known to many of you But it's a very important Very comprehensive Very powerful dua So I thought I'll start with this one inshallah ta'ala. And this is actually Found in Sahih al-Bukhari uh, On the authority of Shaddad ibn Awus radiallahu ta'ala anhu That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Sayyid al-Istighfar The prince of istighfar The master of istighfar The leader of the ways of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tafool that you say the following Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant khalaqtani wa ana abduk wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma istata'at a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'at abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayhi wa abu'u laka bi dhambi taghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru al-dhunub illa ant the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says these words in the daytime, believing in what he says, having certainty in what he's saying, if that person were to die on that day before the evening, he would go to Jannah. And whoever says it in the nighttime, 
with certainty in this meaning, and he or she was to die before the morning, he would be of the people of Jannah as well. So what's the meaning of the dua? Allahumma anta rabbi means, O oh Allah, you are my Lord. La ilaha illa ant. There is no God except you. Khalaqtani wa ana abduk. You have created me and I am your slave. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastafat. And I am doing whatever I can to remain firm on my promise to you and my covenant with you. A'udhu bika min sharri ma sanat. I seek refuge in you from the evils that I have performed. Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alay. I acknowledge to you your favors upon me. Wa abu ulaka bi zambi. And I also acknowledge to you my sins. Sawfirli. So please forgive me. Fa innahu la yaghfiru zunuba illa ant. For there is no one that can forgive sins except you. This is called Sayyid al Istighfar, the prince of all forms of istighfar. This dua also teaches us how to make dua. This dua, the, the form of this dua, the arrangement of this dua, teaches us how to make our own dua. Because the point of the dua, the main point of the dua is istighfar, to ask Allah's forgiveness. But it doesn't get to that point until much later in the dua. It doesn't start out that way. It starts out by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma anta rabbi. La ilaha illa ant. That has nothing to do with istighfar. But that's the etiquette of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't present to him your need right away. Have an introduction in your dua. Start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using some of his most beautiful names. Allahumma anta rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. La ilaha illa ant. There is no God except you. Khalaqtani wa ana abduk. Now you begin to enumerate some of his favors upon you. Khalaqtani. You have created me. Wa ana abduk. And I am your servant. And then you begin to present your need before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by emphasizing how much you need Him. أَنَا عَلَىٰ عَهْدِكَ وَوَعْدِكَ مَسْتَطَعْتِ خَلَقْتَنِي وَأَنَا عَبْدُكَ And I am doing the best that I can, Ya Allah, to remain firm on the promises that I have made to you, on the covenant that I have made to you. I'm trying my best, but in other words, what? I need your help. And therefore, أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت. I seek refuge in you from the evils that I have performed. I need your shelter. I need your refuge. وَأَبُوءُ لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيْهِ I acknowledge your favors upon me. I am not a person, in other words, who has forgotten your favors. My disobedience of you, Ya Allah, that I'm going to ask forgiveness for in a second, Ya Allah, that's not on account of me ignoring your favors. I acknowledge your favors upon me. I am not ungrateful. I am weak. Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu ulaka bi dhunubi or bi dhanbi. And I acknowledge to you my sins. In other words, Ya Allah, I am not going to be arrogant and say, I have never sinned. I'm not going to be arrogant and say, Ya Allah, that wasn't my fault. My wife made me upset. That wasn't my fault. That person started it. No, I acknowledge Allah with humility, with sincerity, that I am a sinful person. I have to, I have to express that with my tongue. I have to verbalize that. Because that's what a servant does. وَأَبُوْ أُولَكَ بِذَنْبِي and I confess to you of my sins, so fairly. So please forgive me. Now I come to the main part. So fairly. After all of this introduction, then I present to him my the, the intent of this whole dua. 
فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْ And I cap up the dua with another praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed there is no one who can forgive sins except you. So inshaAllah ta'ala let's say this dua together. I'm gonna say it slowly and you repeat after me inshaAllah ta'ala with the intention of you making this dua for yourself. Allahumma Anta Rabbi لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك ووعدك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء لك بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت آمين يا رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله